Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video. And we are back around Xanthor. Um, yes, I know I said I'll be back to streaming this week, but unfortunately, we had another setback with our back. I managed to mess my back up again because I tried to rush back into just, you know, normal life stuff, lifting, picking up my daughter, trying to take her to a land. Yeah, it was just, it just went. So I'm still in agony at the moment but i did actually get another racing around zanvor and today's video i want to sort of talk about the bop i know it is a sort of um you know sort of a taboo subject in many ways because there is no right or wrong answer but we're going to talk about a bop and we want to talk about something else which is even more controversial and that is cheating in acc people cheating in acc yes but we will get stuck into that later for now we're just gonna watch this race and you can see with me just being able to do a couple of races in the lfm the improvement i had from last week's race um my first race till till this race which i think was maybe the race after i made a few changes tweaked the tweak the setup and literally was like six temps quicker you know and that's the difference man it's definitely repetition and making sure you're just always on the game practicing and you just find time exponentially most of the time with just doing laps but we're gonna get stuck into the bop first because it was i know it was quite of an, an issue in sro yesterday if you guys watched the uh zambort race um and uh, i you know i heard from heard from a couple of guys people were complaining about the bop a lot of the esports drivers were complaining about the balance of performance around zambort and sort of wanted to you know address some of that man because i guess it's it's sort of something that um, we've all complained about in the past, right? But, um, you know, there, there is certain aspects that maybe I don't think of when I'm when I'm complaining about the BOP. And um, that's like, you know, with if you're someone new to the game, chances are you're not going to be getting everything out of every car, okay? You're completely new. You're just going to jump in a car and whatever feels good, feels good to you. That's it. So... For most people, the BOP is not exactly a massive problem, but at the, the, the top end of the game, the fastest guys, the guys who spend the most time on it, the guys who grind it, um, the guys who do this for a living, they're going to notice every single little change. And um, we can say the BOP has is gotten closer over the last few months, but there is some problems that still need to be resolved, in my opinion. Um, again, what I will say is, you know there's been improvements made recently which i think has brought it a little closer together and i generally don't actually think maybe the bop is not the problem maybe the problem is is the tools that are able to edit the bop for every race need to be made easier and simpler and maybe something actually put into the game to you know make it a lot easier to, to get a, a sort of more of a level playing field you're never going to absolutely get a level playing field on ACC it's literally impossible but there's definitely more ways I think they could achieve getting the balance correct especially for esports competition so if we look at Zandvoort for instance you have cars that really just you know if you're in a, a Lambo and you're going up against a Bentley you're not going to stand much chance especially in the race where the Bentley is super quick anyway so you know in terms of that sort of aspect yes the bentley would need some boping but then how do you balance the bentley against the porsche and then balance it against a ferrari and then the mclaren it's hard to balance you know how good one car is compared to all the other cars in the field because if if the for instance if the the porsche is like a tenth off of the bentley and then you need to balance the bentley heavily to keep it in line with the lambo then how do you you know then you then push the porsche to the front of the queue so it's generally a, a thing that moves up and down. So I feel like there should be tools, maybe built into the back end or just built into the actual game itself where um, you can, you know, you can buff maybe, you can slightly buff a car because I know in, in while doing BOP, you can't really buff a car. You can only really nerf it. But maybe if you could buff a car, then it'll make it a little bit easier to get, you know, get the cars in the same place or, 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 or similar. Um, and again, you have to take into um, account that for a lot of people playing this game, they're not pro drivers. Most of the people playing this game, they play this game for fun. All right. So 
for them, they may not be able to jump in a Porsche and be able to extract everything out of the Porsche, which around some tracks, which is what the best guys could do, which will make that car OP. For most people, they jump into a Porsche, it just feels like any regular car, nothing special. You know what I mean? And, you know, because you've got cars like the BMW, so easy to drive, if you jump in online, it seems as if the BMW is, you know, one of the, the top cars because of how easy it is to drive. So people are able to drive more comfortably. They're able to achieve better times. And therefore, it gives off that perception to the wider public that the BMW is just, you know, well quicker than anything else. But then when you take it to the, you know, the, the top level, um, the very best guys, the guys who can extract everything out of every car, then that's the only real time you actually see um, the difference between the cars to, to a proper extent. But as I said, for the majority of people in this game, they're not going to be able to extract that sort of performance. So they, they generally don't even know um, how good or bad the balance is. And I think that is also a question with when this, when this balance of performance does get done, um, I'm not sure. Well, I have a vague idea who's testing it sometimes. But when this balance is created, in my opinion, it has to be created with someone who is right at the front of the grid on this game to actually get that proper perspective. Because if it's not and it's created by someone who, let's say, is maybe two seconds off the pace, a second and a half off the pace, who can't extract everything out of these cars, it's gonna show up when we have these leagues it's gonna show up when we have these sro competitions and then that's when you start getting the questions like what what is this bop what's what's going on you know what i mean so either i feel like either we need to really put something into the game to, to balance this issue out because it's not going to be an issue that's going to go anywhere man it's not going to be an issue that's going to go anywhere like i could have told you pretty pretty much as soon as i saw like Zanfort on the sro calendar you already know the Bentley's going to be massively strong without even, even, even with uh, 30 kg added, you know, it's still massively strong. And like yesterday, the race pace in the Bentley, they were flying, bro. Not even just McCormack, uh, some of the other guys in the Bentley, they were flying as well, you know. So it's, it's as I said, it's a difficult thing to, um, to kind of put your thumb on, but I, there is ways, man. I believe there definitely is ways. We have to also start looking at why some cars are the sort of, you know, go-to cars. Why are these cars ahead of the field? Why is the, you know, cars at like the Audi and the AMG, which you've seen in real life, are always, always, always at the front of the grid, no matter what. They are always at the front. And then you, sometimes you get an ACC and then we have these long periods of domination for the Aston and the McLaren and cars that have, you know, They've done okay, but they've never really, you know, been that car that to dominate um, in, in the real world. So it's like, why do these cars have these long periods of domination? Now, are they basing the balance of performance just off of, you know, the car's stats and whatever they get sent? Or are they looking at what is actually happening in the real world? And how much of what is actually happening in the real world is down to the teams and down to how good or or how not so good the drivers are for each of these teams. Now, we look at like Rafael Marchiello, we know he's a beast of a driver, so is he, you know, is he distorting the picture of how good the AMG is? I don't know, personally, I think he's a great driver, but I don't think he's distorting the picture. I think that AMG generally just is a GOAT, you know what I mean? Um, if you look at all the different series across Australia, Asia, um, America, whatever, that AMG is always one of the top cars, always, no matter what. So it's, it's, you know, I would be okay if I saw the AMG always one of the go-to cars on the game, but not many people really, not many people really take to the AMG because it's just, it's just not that car on ACC. You know what I mean? Um, it just doesn't really have that reputation. They're a little bit tricky on tires and whatnot. So it's, it's, it's a weird one, man. Like, why are we? Why are we not seeing the same sort of success from the cars in in the real world as we are on the game? We're seeing a lot of other cars being picked that not necessarily haven't really haven't really got their stripes, shall we say? Uh, it's getting a bit better now. We're seeing mainly uh, we're seeing a lot more Ferraris now. Um, Ferrari come, definitely come back into the fold. We've seen loads of BMWs, very easy to drive, not a surprise. 
Um, we've been seeing loads of McLarens for the last, probably the last couple of years. And that's the one that kind of got to me because it was like, based on what? You know what I mean? What are we basing this McLaren pace and dominance off of? You know what I mean? It's, it's a bit, I don't know. For me personally, I kind of find it annoying. I kind of think, well, I, I don't really get why it's so fast. <laughs> you know, I, I don't generally don't get why it has been so dominant for such a long time. You know, when I feel like there is cars that are probably more worthy on this game um, than the McLaren have been up front. One of them definitely is the Audi. I believe that the Audi does have strong tracks, but I don't believe the Audi is, you know, if you're doing a, if you're doing a whole calendar of tracks, I don't believe you're winning it if you're picking an Audi, especially if you're going up against, you know, um, you know, a, a strong field, you're not going to win a competition in an Audi. You know what I mean? Whereas in real life, you know, Audi definitely be up there. You know what I mean? Um, again, we, we talked about the Lambo. We knew, I know the Lambo's had numerous buffs and stuff, but it's just not really... It's just not really an option if you want to win in these fields, unless you get a, a Pacific, Pacific track combination. Even then... You know, how many tracks on this game can you genuinely, hand on heart, say that a Lamborghini is the fastest car around this track? You know, outright. There is not many. There's a few for the Porsche. Um, there's a few for the Bentley. There's a few for the McLaren. You know, uh, one or two maybe for the BMW. But other than that, it's, it's, it's a nope. You know what I mean? Um... And a car that's been so successful over the years, it kind of really, ever since really, realistically, ever since this Evo came out, it hasn't really been anything special. And I guess we could say that in the real world as well, but in the real world, they were heavily, heavily, heavily BOP'd because of how successful the, the, the original uh, Lamborghini Evo actually was. So. Bearing in mind of how heavy the BOP is for the car, that tells you, you know, the true ability of the car. I guess you could say the same with the Ferrari, because I'm sure the Ferrari is heavily BOP'd as well. But um, the Ferrari still has its tracks where it's, you know, it's a monster. Spa, for instance, it's so fast. You know what I mean? It's not too bad around Silverstone. To be honest, look at David Tnitzer. I know he didn't have ballast on his car, but he's got back-to-back -back pole positions around Mazzano, um around Zanvor and maybe Zanvor is a track where maybe we didn't think that the Ferrari would be you know towards the front but it just shows you man like you put the best on the game and they can extract everything out of a car that's when you start to see what the balance really looks like and if you look yesterday the Audis were absolutely nowhere nowhere to be seen you know we have more representation from the Honda than we do the Audi now think about that the Honda right now is a better choice over a whole calendar than the Audi. Why? Is my is my is my question. Why would that the Honda be a better choice than the Audi when the Audi has way more stripes, especially around the tracks that are on ACC, has way more stripes and um, has a back catalogue of of success around these tracks. Why would the why would the Honda be a, a more competitive package? These are the things that I don't quite understand, um, and I think they should address these things, man. Because you know, we do want it to be like semi-realistic, even though we want everyone to use whatever car they want. You know, one of the most favoured cars, one of the cars that most people turn on their TV, they watch, uh, you know, SRO GT Challenge, whatever, and they see one of the most popular cars that's always you know towards the front of the field and then you jump on the game and it's just like it's not even worth even picking it you know what i mean i just i don't know man i feel like we need to do better <laughs> okay we need to do better but anyway that's enough about the bop as i said i just feel like they need to put more tools into the game that can maybe you know people can independently nerf or buff properly to create a a even as possible BOP okay we know different aspects to it some cars have greater tire wear some cars have less tire wear and whatnot 
So if you have a car that's got a very good BOP plus it doesn't destroy its tires, you're probably going to be more competitive um, without really having to, you know, try as hard as somebody else. But anyway, um, next subject I want to get into, which was for me sort of the main bulk of what I want to talk about is, is, is cheating in ACC. Now, this is a subject that I've brought up before. Um, we, we were part of, you know, part of a few people that had caught a cheater before in an SRO competition. And um, for, for a game that, you know, ACC doesn't have an anti-cheat as far as I'm aware. So it's pretty much, you know, JSON files. And, you know, if you guys, you know, if people know coding and stuff like that, it's kind of crazy to think, bro, what would what would one percent of grip? What does that what does that equate to in, in lap time? Because we've seen what happened when, you know, people started using the toe trick and I'm not sure how much extra grip it gave us, but it you definitely found a good six or seven temps just just via that. You know what I mean? So if you can somehow mess around with JSON files and you know you know what you're doing, there is literally nothing stopping anybody. Anybody from altering things in the game that it's going to be extremely hard to detect, especially if you are a soft cheater. What I mean by a soft cheater, someone who is not looking to not looking to really stand out, you know, not looking to all of a sudden just be the fastest guy on the game and stuff like that. Guys who are literally just looking to mix and blend into the to the field at the front, and you would never know. You would literally never know. And uh, we actually we actually did some research and stuff because obviously I'm a I play Call of Duty Warzone a lot and it's a massive cheating problem on that game a massive cheating problem um, and people will do anything to to win to stand out to be popular people will do these things man um, we've we've seen it already on this game and it's like what what's what's actually the deterrent. As I said, we started doing research. I mean, there's actually cheat providers for ACC, bro. We'd actually seen some of the stuff where you can literally like edit your fuel loads so it looks like you're driving around with 90 liters, but you're always got like half or 25, and you know what I mean, and, and, and stuff like that, like your your tire wear, you know, like extra grip, and you know, for people that are just hardcore cheats, I don't care. They might put themselves, give themselves 50% extra grip, which would make it so obvious that they're cheating. But if someone's putting a little one or two percent in here and there, you know what I mean? A little one percent more power or acceleration, stuff that, you know, to the naked eye, you may not notice, you know, like it's gonna make a big, big difference in the end. Um, and as I said, there's there's really no deterrent for this stuff, man. And I, I'm not gonna go on and name any cheat providers or anything like that, because I don't want people to actually go looking for this stuff. But we researched this and we're thinking like, bro, it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous that we have like you know these these top competitions these competitions for you know prizes and stuff like that there's no anti-cheat and you know there's nothing stopping anyone from just cheating basically you know what i mean and i, I kind of find it annoying and but some, sometimes i see things on the game and it, it's not like i'm saying i think like any of the top guys are cheating that's not the case but i feel like sometimes there is there is things that you think hmm you know, if, you, if you're watching someone and, you know, they're, they're not hitting, not even hitting apexes, not even taking good lines through the corners, but they're coming across the line and their times are, you know, right up there. It's like, like how, how do you do that? You know what I mean? How, how do you do a lap where you're hardly hitting the apex, your lines are wrong, you know, like, it's, it's very, it's very weird, man. You know, sometimes you can jump in an online lobby, you can see stuff like this, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and, and it's like, I think definitely for the next game, they need, as far, when you're on PC, as far as I'm concerned, when you're on PC, you need anti-cheat because people will cheat. It's that simple. When I was on console, I never had to worry about any of this stuff. Nothing. Cheating wasn't even something you'd even dream about. Right? It was just, it. you know, you're just racing. Everyone's on the level playing field. On PC, bro, People are just, you just never know, man. You just never know who's cheating. Like I said, look at the whole situation with Bruno Sarai, or what was his name at first? Was it N Nazar Saharo Nazar or something like that? You know what I mean? And the only, re realistically, the only reason this guy got caught 
was because he was trying to win. That's why he got caught, because he was trying to do extra stuff. You know what I mean? We, we watched him at Silverstone where he got pole position with an insane time in the Bentley at the time where the Porsche was definitely quicker. He got like an insane time in the Bentley and then he got a terrible start and then the Porsche got the run on him out of turn one. Anyone who plays this game knows that the Porsche is going to out accelerate a Bentley. But out of nowhere, this guy just accelerates like a ridiculous amount of speed and you you could not mimic it at all. You could try anything you wanted. You could not get the amount of acceleration he got from like third gear. Impossible. And that was the first thing I said, hmm, something's, something's not right about the way he just pulled away from the Porsche, even though the Porsche had a better run out of the corner. It didn't really make any sense. And that was the first thing. And then once he started deleting all his, his streams and stuff, I said, that, that guy's dodgy. Little did we know that he, I think, I think he got banned. And then he came back as another person, bro. He came back as Bruno Sarai. And the only reason why he got caught is because, you know, one, they were able to match up his IP address to the guy who they banned the first time. And two, is because one race, the guy had damage, but he was still lapping like, you know what I mean? He was still lapping as fast as everybody else. I'm like, hold on a second. This guy's supposed to have like mad damage. How is he still going so quick? You know what I mean? And then that's when people started looking into things. And that's what I mean. Like, because he wasn't subtle, he was easy to catch. But for people that are smarter, for people that are subtle, like, you know, how do you stop these people? How do you stop these people invading the game and getting credit that they don't deserve? Because I, I guarantee you now, this is PC. There are people cheating on ACC. I guarantee it. You know what I mean? It might not... No one's going to openly come out and say, yep, I'm cheating, but for sure. You know, the amount of people that, you know, you could be racing one minute there, you know, a second, a second and a half of the pace, next minute, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, they're, they're not far off esports times. It's like, wait, what? What, what? what happened? You know what I mean? No explanation. And especially if these are guys who are not streaming and they're not people you can really actually look into or anything like that, you will never know. You know what I mean? So I feel like there needs to be an anti-cheat. In any competitive game, there needs to be an anti-cheat. When you're doing something for prizes, for money, for um, just just notoriety, for people to be known and for people to build their reputations, um, I feel like there should be an anti-cheat on the game. And I hope for the, for the next one there is, because it's important, man. Especially when you're on PC, this is the, the only, the only downside about being on a PC compared to a console. There's always, always, always the chance and the opportunity for those who know better to, to you know, cheat their way into positions where they shouldn't be, you know? And um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I, I don't know why anyone would cheat, you know? What, what, is, what is the satisfaction in achieving something you know you can't really achieve, but then the only, the only person you're, you're really lying to is you're lying to yourself. You know what I mean? And that's the weirdest thing. In their mind, you know, they know they're not that good. Or they know that they're having to cheat just to keep up. So how do you... I don't know how you correlate that with, with, with happiness. It's, it's a weird one. But as I said, like, I play Warzone a lot. I play Call of Duty a lot. And bro, the amount of people cheating is insane. The, the thing that gets me the most about cheating is, is actually when you actually, you know, when these people get caught and you look at the age of some of these people, it's like, bro, these are not kids. These are like grown adults cheating on, on, on the computer game. I can't, it baffles me. That in itself just baffles me. Why, why, why would you? It literally makes no sense. You play a competitive game, not to be competitive, but to cheat your way to the top. And then when you when you have success doing it, you you're actually filled with joy. That you know that makes you feel good. Wow, mental. I mean, anyway, guys, listen. That that was me going on with a bit of a rant, man. And you know, I wasn't able to do another race, so I just felt like I needed to bring you guys more content. I had another race that I had done on LFM where my pace was my pace was actually a bit up and down in this race, but you can see from 
the race I did the other day, well, I think my fastest lap was like a 35 3 or something like that. You can see we have improved on race pace by about half a second. Track conditions were almost identical as well. Um, my pole position time was about, actually my pole position time was a full second quicker. And that was just, you know, my first day back on, um, on the game. And then within a couple of tries, you know, after editing the setup a little bit, found so much more time and AOR, AOR um, signups are actually open at the moment. I'm thinking that I might sign up with the AMG. I know it's tough on tires, but um, I might just sign up with the AMG, man. I haven't used the AMG for a long time. So, you know, I might give it a go. Why not? Why not? Why not do something a little bit different? Um, I know that most other people are probably, well, judging by the calendar, feel like we might see a lot of Porsches next season. Porsches and McLarens probably is going to be the order of the day. Um, maybe a few BMWs, I don't know yet. But um, the calendar's a bit, eh, you know, it's a bit, yeah, it, they could have done a lot better with their calendar. But it is what it is, man. Um, anyway, guys, it's Cryptic TMG. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace.